Before we get started, a huge thank you goes out to Pine64, who have generously given me various of their products completely for free. And as someone who doesn't have a lot of spending money, I am most grateful. And this is no strings attached too, eh? They didn't even ask me to thank them or anything. I just think what they're doing is super awesome and that they deserve the support. So with that, let's talk about the Pine Time. What comes pre-installed, how to update the firmware, and what features does it offer? The Pine Time is a very inexpensive smartwatch, especially compared to the competition. If you are on a budget but still want something super duper cool, this can do the job. Mine came pre-installed with an older version of Infinitime, 0.7.1. I'll take the time to look around what used to be before we flashed a newer version. First thing to notice is that the time has defaulted to the Unix Epoch and has no way to set the time manually from the OS itself, something that I definitely think is a missing feature. We have some system information, shows me the uptime, that's pretty cool, among other things the Bluetooth MAC address, and a secret message from the developer. Hello. Uh, we can uh, change the brightness. I can't wait any longer. Okay, let's flash the new version of Infinitime. That's version 1.0.0. So I'll be using an app called Siglo to do an over-the-air firmware update to the Pine Time. That sounds so scary. I'm not modern enough to understand how this is better than a, a wire. Is it even secure? One thing is for sure, it's freaking high-tech awesomeness. Okay, so first we need to scan for our device. This might take a few scans. But in time, after a reboot of both devices, the Pine Time has been found. So I downloaded the update from GitHub. I'll have a link in the description. Uh, let me just select that file using the file manager that wasn't designed for mobile screens. And there we go. Let's flash it. Come on, how cool is this? I am manually flashing an update to my Pine Time without the internet through the frickin' air. I think it's cool. So this should take a few minutes to complete. Uh, let's fast forward to that part. Well, it should be done, but in fact it froze at the last few bytes. But that's okay, nothing is borked. The device simply doesn't apply any changes, so we're back to square one. So let's just try again. I got it working after a few more tries. I'm not sure why I was having so much technical difficulties, as I haven't had any in the past testing on my own, but that's okay, as long as it works in the end, I'm happy. So we can see the awesome new interface, looking really snazzy, such razzle dazzle. Let's sync the time. We can do that using Siglo. Glow. 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 And our time is synced. One thing to note, super smooth and responsive. It's all trickery, really, but that's just the beauty of it. If I were to scroll smoothly, slowly, uh, it would just play the scroll animation, so to speak. But 90% of the time, I don't really notice since I'll just be swiping max speed anyway. And this device needs all the optimizations it can take. Once we're happy with our installation, we may verify it so that if ever the device crashes, this will be the new restore point. Otherwise, if it does crash, it'll just go back to whatever we had before. The About section has a new look, but removed the easter egg, sadly. Though, it now has the license, which is amazing. Never have I been happier to have these words printed on my watch. This is also the only time I've had these words printed on my watch. Battery percentage, seems good. Two different watch faces, a solid start. Different time formats, unenjoyed feature, various possible wake up commands. This is really cool. I personally like to have my watch wake up when I twist my wrist to look at the time. It's what's most natural to me, 
and it works very well in my experience. It's the hands-off solution. Let's see what apps we have. A stopwatch. Basic, but gets the job done. Music. I can't bother to set that up right now. But it looks really cool. A step counter. In my experience, extremely accurate. And it even has a cool visualizer. Heart rate BPM. Severely inaccurate in my experience. Half the time that this thing thinks I'm dead. Uh, maybe I'm just not wearing it correctly, but I don't know. A painting app. More of a proof of concept than anything else, but it's nice. A lonely game of Pong. Maybe Breakout would have been a better game to make. But as simple as the game is, it is running in real time, which I do believe is the point of this demonstration. 2048 works perfectly, except that sometimes it double reads my input, or at least it would seem. I'd swipe and the game would do two swipes in that same direction, which is slightly frustrating. There is also a flashlight. It's good enough if you're in a pinch and this is the only thing you have, no phone or anything. In conclusion, this is a very promising cheap little device. I definitely need to get my hands on the developer kit. They offered and I said no thank you. I have no idea why. I have a love for little devices like these. I mean, when I was at school and we were giving graphing calculators for the first time, uh, the TI-83 Plus to be specific. I wrote a 3D renderer for mine using the TI basic language. It wasn't particularly fast, but it was 3D on a device that wasn't supposed to do it. I even drew some 3D functions on my calculator. It was actually a tool. With some cheats, as we've seen, you can have quite the seamless experience even given the limited hardware. My videos are available a little earlier on Odyssey. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. These simple actions help more than you could imagine. Plus, it helps you stay notified for when I release new content. For example, a video on the Pine Cube. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.